So, wouldn't it be great to to know the future? Um, there have been films and films and films made on this kind of exploring this premise. But just imagine if I could somehow magically transport you to 18 months from now and show you a day in your life, 18 months from now, and you knew that this day was definitely coming. And imagine on that day you were outside enjoying a picnic with a whole crowd of friends and and the friend comes over and you give them a big hug and there are friends, uh, there are kids um, playing together and you walk up the road, it's a Sunday afternoon and you walk into church, you're greeted with a handshake and there are no face masks and Vic uh, lets rip with the most epic rendition of In Christ Alone and you are singing your heart out and you get home and you go to bed, you, you've, got a, you've got a good job, you've got a lovely home, and you're looking forward to the week ahead. Now, who knows what 18 months time is going to bring? But imagine if you knew that that day was coming for certain. Wouldn't it make a difference to your experience of things right now? Well, if you're a Christian, actually you you do know the future and it's it may be a little further off but it's way better than the picture i've just painted so have have a look at the the verses we've been looking at um this week i'm just going to read from the start again and we're going to get to the end of this little section today for those who are led by the spirit are the children of god this has been our focus this week the spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit is received has brought about your adoption to sonship. By him, we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory now we have seen haven't we that being adopted as god's children has a relational kind of um, aspect okay we we are connected into relationship with him we cry abba father the spirit testifies with our spirit but it also has a a legal component um, as well because as it says here, the son is the heir. Now, in that culture, that was so obvious a point that it didn't need explaining. The, 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 the oldest son was the inheritor of the family estate. Now, here's the thing. If you become a child of God, Paul is saying here, you also become an heir of God. Now, let's just see how this how this works. So here is God, the father, and here is Jesus Christ. Now, he is the son of God. That means that Jesus is he is son and heir. Now, what is the he the heir of? <clears throat> he is the heir of. Do you see the word at the end there? Glory. That's the kind of summary of 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 the inheritance it's god's plan to perfectly recreate everything that's what jesus is heir of but as paul has been explaining if we have trusted in jesus then you and i okay have been united with christ his work on the cross his resurrection his inheritance by the holy spirit and if we are adopted into the family with God as our father, then we also are heirs. Or as it puts it in the verse, we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Whatever he inherits, we also inherit. OK, God's perfectly renewed cosmos it's yours. You are son and heir of it all in Christ. 
But there is an if in this verse. Did you spot it as we read through? We are heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. Here it is. It's a little word, but with big implications. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Now, it's important we understand this. OK, this is not a condition. OK, rather, it's an inevitable path. OK, it's an inevitable path that we must tread. OK, we, the only way of becoming an heir is if first you share in the sufferings um, of Jesus. OK, and the reason it's an inevitable path is because this is the path that Jesus himself treads. OK, L look at this. this. This is this is the path that Jesus trod. OK. First, the cross and only then the inheritance of glory. Now, here's the thing. If we are united with Jesus, then it becomes an inevitability that we have to walk the same path as him. The cross before the crown, suffering before glory. As Jesus himself said, whoever would come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Now, Paul, in the rest of Romans 8, he's going to be really digging into this bit here. OK, what does it mean to what is some of the sufferings that we encounter in life? But the key thing is remembering the whole picture. You are an heir and your future is completely assured. And so we asked that question at the beginning. Wouldn't it be great to know the future? Well, we do, because in Christ we are heirs. And friends, this morning, can I say the, the more we remember and cherish that future, the more we will be able to persevere through times of suffering in the here and now, the more we'll be willing to take up our cross for the sake of Jesus, the more we'll be willing to deny ourselves now, knowing that the inheritance is just round the corner. Well, if you're trusting in Jesus, you have been adopted into the greatest inheritance you could ever imagine. What will you do today to remember that and to live in the light of it? Well, let me pray as we close. So, loving Father, we, we praise and thank you for such clear teaching in the book of Romans and particularly this eighth chapter. And Lord, this week we have really kind of paused on the idea that we have been adopted as your children. And we thank you for the riches of that, the, the future promise of that, of the current enjoyment of a relationship with you um, in that. And we pray that you would strengthen this understanding in us and, and so strengthen our, our hope and peace and joy um, in you as we wait together patiently uh, for this inheritance that you have promised all those um, in Christ. Uh, we thank and praise you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.